Hello everyone, uh, I welcome once again uh, all of you to our webinar on four steps on building a mobile strategy that converts. Uh, we have with us Talia Wolf, who is the CMO and founder of Banana Splash. Uh, Talia will be talking about optimizing mobile UX and enabling more conversions from your mobile visitors. How can you make your, uh, you know, convert more of your mobile visitors into paying customers? So uh, I'm going to put it over to uh, give it over to Talia, who will take it on from there. Talia. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really looking forward um, to getting started with this. So, um, yeah, as you've explained, I'm going to be talking today about mobile optimization. And I'll just tell you a bit about myself. Um, so I am the CMO at Banana Splash, which is a mobile optimization tool. We essentially help businesses turn more mobile visitors into leads and customers by using personalization. Um, other than that, I um, basically work, I've been doing conversion optimization for about five or six years. Um, I started an agency called Conversiona, which focuses on uh, consumer psychology and emotional targeting. Um, and I've run thousands of tests in the past few years, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to give you as much information as possible to really kind of start converting more mobile visitors. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to ask you um, is what percentage of your traffic is mobile? You see, um, most people that I ask don't actually know that. Or if they do know how much percentage of their traffic is mobile, they don't really know where they land, what landing pages they're on, what devices they use, and then what do they search for. These are critical parts of mobile visitors that we need to know. So today's goal is going to be about you stopping, um, stop treating your mobile desktop, uh, your mobile and desktop visitors the same way, and basically start combating them. One of the things that we've asked in the past is, what is the first thing that you do when you wake up? And 80% of people say that the first thing that they do before they brush their teeth, before they go to the bathroom, is check their mobile phones. So obviously we know this, mobile isn't the next best thing, the next big thing, it already is the big thing. And the question is, what are you guys doing to convert these mobile visitors? What are you doing to turn them into customers? So um, a while ago, I was invited to speak in Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do is go on a beer tour, because um, I really like the, the um, Amsterdam beers. Um, and then I looked on my phone. So I was looking for a really cool place to go see some beers. Um, and this was the first website that I saw. And I didn't really get what was going on, so I went to another one. And it said, welcome to Amsterdam. But there wasn't really anything to do with you know me and what I was looking for. So I realized that I'm not going to find what I want on mobile, so I went to my desktop. And over here, I saw exactly what I needed. It gave me all the information um, about what this company is doing and where it is and what I can get out of it. But you see, the result um, of this is basically what we're seeing on the left-hand side is a responsive design. Um, it takes the desktop and makes it look good on mobile. And that's the problem with responsive design is that it basically kills conversions. You see, when any, whenever anyone mentions a landing page, the first thing people think about is a desktop one. But this isn't your landing page anymore. This is. And the problem is, is there are, there's no recognition here to the fact that I'm on my mobile phone. Yes, it looks good on mobile, but what about the fact that I'm a completely different person when I'm on my mobile phone? There's no emotional triggers and there's nothing here that's addressing the fact that I'm on my phone and I need a different experience. And you see, mobile experiences are considered so bad that in a recent neuroscience study, they found that the level of stress caused by mobile experiences is comparable to watching a horror film. This is how bad people feel on their mobile phone when they're looking for something. And I think it's kind of like how I felt when I was looking for that beer tour in Holland, right? Now, because marketers are thinking desktop first and they don't really know how to convert mobile traffic, there's a 270% gap in conversions. So even though most websites are seeing a lot more traffic on mobile, they're still seeing more conversions from desktop. 
And the reason for that is because when we're on our mobile phone, we behave differently. Right? We're on the go, we're multitasking, we're watching TV, maybe we're on the train and we're talking on the phone and we're also on our tablet. So we're constantly doing a lot of things and it's very, very different than what we do on our desktop when we're you know, in our office and we have Wi-Fi and everything's great and we have time to read through everything. We have different emotional and behavioral needs when we're on our phone and that's why we need to create a better customer journey that addresses that specific state of mind. So how do you do it? Well, there are no magic solutions, um, but I have a process from our findings and from the thousands of A-B tests that we run. Um, and so over the next few minutes, what I'm going to do is get you started with getting to know your mobile visitors and putting in a system, a process of turning these visitors into customers. So let's get started. Four step process. The first is understanding the behavior. The second is addressing the emotional triggers. Then personalizing the experience. And most importantly, learning and optimizing the first one. Understanding mobile behavior. Through a five inch screen. Phones over 400 times a day. We're constantly using a ton of devices. So we're usually using about three devices at the same time. And we're constantly on our phone. In fact, 60% of our of mobile visitors expect a site to load in under three seconds. And what this actually means is that a one second delay can cause 7% loss in conversion. This is insane because basically people on their mobile phone expect a lot more than you. But it doesn't stop just that. Over 65% of purchases online in general start on mobile phone. So yes, a lot of people will start on their mobile phone and then convert to desktop. However, by a good um, experience on your mobile phone, you're going to start losing people on desktop because people aren't going to move from their mobile phone to the desktop because they're disappointed with the experience. One of the ways that we actually tackle that at Banana Splash is by helping people cross devices. Banana Splash is able to um, kind of identify the page that the person is on. So we identify that the person is on the checkout page, that they are a returning visitor, so they're more likely to be purchasing. And we also identify that the customer is idle on the checkout page for about five seconds. The other thing that it identifies is a type of device, whether it's an Android or if it's an iOS device. And what we do is we send in a personalized um, splash saying, not ready to check out, save this item for later. Now this is a simple way of helping people save an item, send it to their email and open it up later when they have the time and capacity or they feel more safe converting on desktop. And doing this for our customers has shown us between 12 to 54% increase in conversion rates. Just by understanding the behavior and the people on, our, um, on the websites, what are they doing? And how do you actually know what these people are doing? Who are these mobile visitors? So let's take a look at a few mobile metrics I want you to start looking at. The first one is getting to know your audience. So here is where you start looking at each device and how it's doing. So how is desktop doing? How's tablet doing? How's mobile doing? Then you want to look at the specific devices and browsers. So maybe iOS is doing really well, but Android isn't. And maybe you have specific browsers like Safari that have a serious issue to them. Once you kind of start looking at that, you understand the different points in your funnel that need to be optimized. Next, we're going to look at the acquisition. So where are these people coming from? Which channels are converting the most and which aren't? Sometimes you'll discover that a smaller channel that is delivering much less traffic is actually converting much better than a, ch a different channel that's bringing in a lot more traffic. And you can use this information to really understand what is the best landing page, what is the best way and best place to send people to, and then also understand which messaging is working best. Which leads me to landing pages. Now, you'll be surprised, but they aren't always the same landing pages as on desktop. And over here, you really want to start understanding where are people landing. And this will also give you an understanding of what people are searching for, which ads they're clicking on, because this is where they come to. 
And maybe even more important is exit pages. So most time people look at bounce rate, which is when someone arrives on your site and bounces without taking any action. But exit pages help you understand the leak in the funnel. So I'm not looking at people who immediately bounce, I'm looking at people who have started using the funnel on their mobile phone, but exited at some point. They tried something and they left. This is gonna help you find the key points within that, that leak and that you need to fix. And then the last one is the site behavior. So it's a technical metric, and when it comes to mobile, the technical issues can make or break your conversion rates. So you can use this metric to identify particular issues that you can easily fix, like loading time. So this is kind of a quick look at understanding mobile behavior by looking at the right metrics and then addressing them within the funnel, like we did by sending people and giving people the option to, say, to save something for later. Next, we have addressing emotional triggers. The emotional state of mind. We love to think of ourselves as rational people who make rational decisions in life. We have a problem, we figure out the pros, the cons, and then we make a good decision. However, in fact, every decision that we make in life has an emotional reason to it. Whether we're buying a house, or buying clothes, or insurance, or a mortgage, everything we buy has some sort of an emotional aspect to it. So if you're selling insurance, for example, you're not selling insurance, you're selling peace of mind. And if you're selling clothes, you're selling self-esteem. And the thing is that advertisers, advertisers have known this for years and they've been using it. So many times I like to ask, what is this advertising? And most most times people will say, well, this advertises clothes, this will advertise uh, maybe pillows or accessories. But actually, in fact, this is an ad for Coca-Cola. Okay, And you'll notice that there is no product in here and no logo. But they don't need it. Because what they're saying here is that drinking Coca-Cola makes you cool. If you're a guy and you drink Coca-Cola, you're going to look like this guy and you're going to get women like that and you're going to be amazing. And then if you're a woman, you're going to look like that and everything in your life will be amazing and cool because Coca-Cola, that is who we are. Lego does it too. They don't talk about the castle that you can build. They talk about beauty, pride, the type of emotion that I want as a parent to have my child experience. I want my child to be proud of themselves, right? Nike, who for years have been using um, a professional athlete to kind of advertise themselves. So you, we all kind of aspire to be like them. Decided to take a kid who is overweight, put on a pair of trainers and tell him to go running. And they wrote, find your greatness. Now again, there's no product. You can't see the shoes in the image. But that doesn't matter because it's not about the t-shirt that you're selling or the coffee and it's definitely not about the shoes that you're selling. It's about how you feel when you're wearing those shoes. And that is the essence of marketing because people don't remember what you say, they remember how you make them feel. The only problem is that everything that I've shown you is from the offline world. And that's why over the past six years, I've ran thousands of tests using emotional triggers in consumer psychology so that I can understand customer decision, uh, decision making better. So I can understand what customers need emotionally and translate that knowledge into a better landing page, a better funnel, and of course, higher ROI. Because when we look at the online world, it's exactly the opposite. Call, message, share whatever you want for free. It's all about the features and the pricing. Same goes for Shutterstock, access 30 million images. There's nothing here about what's in it for me or how my life is gonna get better and how emotionally it's going to affect my life. It's about the product. And really, when it comes to marketing, the real question you need to ask yourself is how do you make your customers feel? And maybe more importantly, how do your customers want to feel when they find your solution? Now, in order to do that, there are three pillars for emotional targeting. How do you get started with addressing those emotional triggers of your customers? So the first thing you want to do is make it about the customer. And this is a very important one because you are not the hero of the story. Your customer is. It's not about how you are amazing and how you have better pricing or better features or you're better than anyone else. It's about how you're going to make your customer's life better and how through you their life will, be, will get better. Next, you can't just say it, you also have to show it. 
So many times we will see on a landing page a picture of the product, of the platform of someone. And the problem with that is that it has nothing to do with the emotion. Now, our brains process images 60,000 times quicker than text. So that image and the colors that you're using are the first thing people are going to see when they land on your landing page. And that's why it's so important to use a good image that portrays a specific emotion. The third pillar is run meaningful A-B tests. Now, this is a really important one because most tests evolve around testing buttons and titles. But the problem with these kind of tests is that you don't really learn anything from them. Now, A-B testing is about knowledge. It's about learning more about your customers, understanding their decision-making processes, and then translating that knowledge into a better funnel. You want to learn as much as possible so that whatever test that you run, whether you win or you lose, when you get the results, you understand the results and you know what to do next. The thing is that this is very good for desktop and for mobile, but in the mobile world, it's actually even more extreme because we have hyper information 24 7 everywhere we go. We have everything we need in the tip of our fingers, we can get to it. However, a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. I love this quote because it's so true. We have so much going on, so many people who are targeting us and trying to tell us what to do. And that's why when it comes to mobile, less is more. So you, know, you need to have one single message. And you need to use less words. And you need to have large font. And more importantly, you need to have one main visual trigger because there's so much less space. And this is where you're going to make your impact. And you can also use colors to make that impact. Because our brains process images and colors faster, you don't have to say everything on the landing page. You can use color to portray trust or fun and make that an emotional feeling. So, for example, when we started working with this insurance company, our goal was to increase mobile leads. Now, using Banana Splash, we identified, we identified the behavior of the mobile visitor. So we wanted someone who's already seen about three pages on the site. We also wanted to target people who were coming in after hours, so this was a time when no one could answer the phone. And we wanted to really target people who are engaged. So we targeted people who were already saw about 900 pixels. This means that they've scrolled about three times. So we know that these people are really engaged, they're really interested, and they're doing it at their own time, they're not at work. So they're also really um, emotional and care about this. So we use this message, which is protect the ones you love. Let us help you. Now, the combination of using both the behavior, understanding where the mobile visit is coming from, what time they're coming, and what they're doing on this site, and combining that with the emotion of wanting to protect your family and wanting to feel safe, gave us a 71% uplift in conversion rates, in, in leads for this customer. Well, for example, working with this locksmith, we identified the specific search term that people were looking for. I mean, imagine being stuck outside your house at 3 o'clock in the morning, you can't get in, or even if it's 5 p.m., all you want to do is get home after work and you're stuck. You're stressed. You just want to find someone who's near and close who can help you. So we identified what the search term was that people were looking for, and we identified where they were coming from so we could give them that specific trigger. So one of them was get locksmith help now, because people were looking for locksmith help now. And the other one was targeting specific people in Atlanta who were looking for a locksmith 24-7. And we were able to see between 100 and 300% uplift in calls to their center and more clients coming in. This is all by identifying behavior of mobile visitors and giving them the message that they need, the emotional message. So, so far, we've covered understanding behavior. And we've covered the emotional triggers of people. So, understanding who our mobile customers are and then understanding their state of mind. But our next step is personalization. 
This is one of my favorite screenshots. It's from my Netflix. Um, and you can see that everyone is moving towards personalization. The top picks for Talia, this is specifically for me. They've seen what I've been watching, and they're giving me ideas of what I can watch next. They're very kind of exact, by the way. So you see, the thing is that it's not just about what you say. It's also about the when. And this is the essence of personalization. You see, over 52% of companies are saying that they see an uplift in conversions by using personalization. This is huge. People are seeing more website visitors, returning visitors. They're seeing more actual purchases and registrations and time on site just by giving people what they need. In fact, 86% of consumers will pay up to 25% more for better personalization. And this happens because we're overwhelmed with the information that we're receiving on our phones and everywhere. It's just overwhelming. Everyone is constantly trying to get to us and get their message through. Personalization helps us drown out that noise and focus on what really matters to us personally. So instead of me spending the time looking for what I need and browsing through your website until I find it or move to the competitor, personalization helps you send the right message at the right time. And with mobile, it's really simple. You have all this information. You know where they are, you know what time it is, you know where the country they're coming from, you know the source that they're using, you know if it's their first time or their last time or their second time, you know who these people are so you can use this advantage and use it to convert people. For example, many times when you go on a, on a mobile site, you immediately get a prompt to download an app. Now, I don't really get this because when you start, when you arrive on a landing page, I don't even know what this product is and it's already telling me to download their app. Why would I do that? You see, instead of showing a download the app immediately when people land on your homepage or your landing page, we actually use Banana Splash to show it according to your specific device so you get the right call to action if you're in an iOS or an Android device. And we also use it to show it to people who have already viewed two pages in this session. So you wouldn't get it once you immediately landed on the page. You would get it if you moved to the next page. So we already know that you're engaged. But other than that, we also used it to show it to returning visitors. So this is their second time on the site and we know that now they can get a value. Now they'd be interested in get it, getting even more features by downloading our free app. And because of this specific targeting and segmentation, because we were, we were able to send this message at the right time, we saw 100% uplift in downloads to their app. And this is again all because we're using the right messaging at the right time. We're using the right emotional triggers. We've identified the behavior of mobile visitors and we're giving them the message that they want. And the key here is always looking at what the mobile visitor needs and then turning that into higher revenue because once you make your customer happy, they will be happy to purchase from you. For example, when you want to increase news auto signups. This happens so many times. Again, you land on a blog and you're immediately asked to sign up to the newsletter. Why would you do that if you haven't read an article? So for the next web, we've been working with them for a while, and what we do is we only show this to people who have scrolled 900 pixels, and we also use the emotional trigger of FOMO, so fear of missing out. Don't miss out, get the latest news. Now you'll also notice that we have two different designs. On the left-hand side, we have more of an iOS look and feel. It's like a message coming in from one of your messaging apps. But on the right-hand side, we have an image of the editor-in-chief. And we were testing different emotional triggers to see what would work best, what would make you feel more comfortable in converting at the right time, because now that you've spent the time reading, now you'll be able to sign up. So we saw a 32% uplift in registrations. And one of the things that's really interesting is that these, this website, the next web, has over 7 million unique visitors who arrive on their website every um, month. So can you imagine how much of an uplift that is? And in fact, at one point, the mobile was actually converting better than desktop at some point. So 
there are so many ways you can address real-time needs when it comes to mobile. I mean, you can tell people that you ship to their country, and you can give them a click to call to help them when they're stuck out. Or you can just give them a video to watch your product so they understand who you are. Or you can also give them a personalized coupon if they're signed in. Or even if they're, if they're not signed in yet, you can still give them a coupon according to the page that they land on and the search term that they're using. It's that easy. And you see, so far, we've covered the three most important elements of designing for the mobile state of mind, the behavior, the emotion, and personalization, so the combination of the two. But probably the most important part, and I started talking about this just before, is learning and optimizing. You see, when it comes to A-B testing, our, it's not about increasing that one KPI. It's not about just getting more registrations. And I said this before, what we want is to gain knowledge. We want to learn more about our customers. We want to understand who they are. And if you run meaningful tests, if you learn, you will actually understand the results of your test. And when you understand the results of your test, you're able to scale stuff. So I have seen through many years now that when you run meaningful tests, you're actually able to change sales processes within your company and customer success. Because now people within the company know who our customers are. They know what triggers them, what they're interested in. And we can use that to optimize even further. And you can optimize so many different things within your funnel. For example, um, for Geek Time, which is another really cool publisher for um, startup scenes, one of the things that we wanted to do is really run a meaningful test that would teach us more about who our customers are. So we tested three different things, three different elements within the splash. We have never miss the post, sign up for the newsletter. And then the other one that we have is stay ahead of the game, the latest on tech and startups. Each one of these splashes is completely different in terms of the behavioral elements of when it shows up in messaging. One is FOMO. We spoke about this before for the next web. So don't miss a post. Don't worry. You can have all the information that you need. But then the other one is about staying ahead of the game and getting the latest news on, startup, on startups and tech. You see many people, and especially when it comes to marketers and geeks and the startup scene, people want to stay ahead of the game, and that's part of their emotional triggers, being able to be ahead, gaining that knowledge and knowing what to tell people. So we also test the design, right? On one side, we have the regular kind of black-looking uh, overlay that comes in. And on the other hand, we have this smart kind of monkey that comes in and makes it a bit more fun. And due to these changes, we were able to see a 65% uplift in registrations. Now, this was the first test we run. And one of the things that you really do need to remember is that when it comes to hypotheses and when it comes to A-B testing, you really have to test quite a few times. So it's not that you come to an idea, OK, I want to test this emotional trigger, or I think this is going to work. And once you test it and it succeeds, that doesn't mean that that's what it is and that's it. You have to keep testing and keep coming up with new ideas to prove that hypothesis so that you know that you're on the right direction. So let's take a look at what we discussed today. We spoke about understanding mobile behavior. And then we took a look at addressing emotional triggers, personalizing the experience, and learning and optimizing. I think if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this webinar today is that you have less than two seconds to convert mobile visitors, or they're off to their next competitor. And this isn't the way to do it. Though Chandler is amazing, you still don't want to beg people to stay. You see, you have to get to know your mobile visitors better, and you need to create a better customer journey for them. I want you guys to stop using responsive design as an automatic solution. Yes, responsive design is a great way, and it's so much better than pinching and zooming and spending time on trying to find what we want on the site. But it's just the first step. The next step is identifying content hierarchy. It's understanding what people are looking for and giving that to them. You see, a funnel that assists them in their time of need 
that gives them what they need will also increase your conversions. Remember that the root of every conversion is human behavior. And it is our goal as marketers to understand the behavior, understand decision-making processes, and to stop treating mobile visitors as if they're mini desktop ones. So again, responsive design is a good place to start, but it's not enough. So this is where I will leave you, and I'll say that we have just published a complete guide to mobile landing page optimization. So if you would like that, I have created an email for you guys to just email me and let me know that you would like the, the mobile guide. And with that, I will open up to questions if you guys have any. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Talia. Uh, those are indeed some amazing insights. Uh, to all those who are attending, uh, we're going to take a break for about a couple of minutes, after which we are going to start with the Q&A sessions. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Talia, please address them in the questions tab, and we'll take them up. So talk to you in a couple of minutes. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we will now start with the Q&A session. Uh, Talia, are you ready? Yes, yeah, I am. Fantastic. So uh, I'll start with the first question. Uh, Steve has this question to ask. Uh, he says, Google stated this week that 67% of mobile shoppers convert on desktop. Now, what are your thoughts on this and how do you address attribution tracking from mobile to desktop conversion? It's a great question because, and I think it takes me to one of my first um, kind of things that I was saying earlier, is that even though most um, sales do happen on, on websites right now on desktop, as you see, over 65 or 67% of all purchases start on mobile. And that's one of the things that's really interesting because the, the, even though they convert on desktop, you really do still have to make sure that the experience on mobile is good or you won't have those people convert from mobile to desktop, right? I mean, the people who move from mobile to desktop, 
do so because they had an experience that made them think, okay, I do want to buy on this website, but I need the time now to go onto my desktop because maybe I don't feel safe or maybe I don't have my credit card on me or you know, maybe I need to ask permission from someone. So there's many different reasons. But you need to kind of give a person that seamless experience so they can actually convert on desktop and they want to convert on, web, on desktop. So one of the things that I do, by the way, um, to kind of track that other than cross um, browser tracking um, is also um, when it comes to e-commerce specifically but also on other SaaS products is trying to get people to actually um, sign up because when someone signs up we have their information and we can kind of track them and use that as in personalization I can give them the right message at the right time because I know what they've added so I can track their user agents from mobile to tablet to desktop so I think, as I said, one of the most important things is being able to provide that seamless um, customer journey that works both on mobile and on web so that people want to make that jump from mobile to um, desktop. Great. Uh, our next question is from Michael who asked, uh, what do you see converting better for customers who get a lot of traffic, an app? or a well-optimized mobile site? Great question. Um, here's the thing, I was reading this a while ago. Um, five, there are five apps, um, I'll say that again, 90% of our uh, usage on apps is on five apps. Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, Google, and Google Maps. Uh, most of our time when we're on apps, we're spending them on very well-known apps. Now, if you have an app, that's great. However, the problem is that when you search for something, you search on the web. And other than that, getting people to download your app is a very big task. I mean, first you have to have the resources to create an app and you have to spend all the time in designing it and making it sure that it converts within the app. And then the other thing is that um, about 90% of mobile uh, downloads of apps are, de are deleted within 24 hours of downloading an app. So there's a lot of kind of work you need to do within the app to keep people buying. Now, I'm not saying that apps don't work, but I think that when you have someone on your website already and they're there, I try to maximize the potential out of them. And that's one of the reasons also don't immediately tell people to download my app. I try to get them to convert on mobile before, on my mobile web. But then if I see that it's a returning visitor, if I see it's someone who, t who takes a lot of time and is in in interested, that's when I will give them the um, prompt to download the app and try and get them in there because I know that they're more likely to download the app and stay within the app. So I don't think one um, kind of overtakes the other, but it's not easy to generate traffic for an app and it's not easy to convert within an app and keep people engaged in an app. So when you do have people on your mobile website, I would hang on to that and try and get the most out of them while you can. Fantastic. Uh, well, our next question is from Oscar, who asked uh, that when AB when AB split testing, uh, given that the control is loaded first and then the variation is loaded, uh, loaded, well, they've noticed that the bounce rate is highly affected for variation. So, do you have any tips? Do you have any insights as to how this issue can be addressed? Yeah, um, that's one of the biggest issues on desktop too, because you create a test. And because the variation takes time to load, a lot of many times that is actually the reason the test fails. And as we've seen on mobile, that's a huge issue. Uh, for us um, at Banana Splash, that was one of the main reasons we built the splashes as an overlay uh, that is hosted on our end because we knew how much uh, loading time affected a website. So. Um, I think when it comes to many personalization tools, they change your website or you have to create specific variations that change the website and have to be loaded within the website and they slow the site down. So for us, we use a, a dynamic layer that isn't actually hosted on the customer's site, it's hosted on our end and in that way it doesn't slow the site, the site down. So that's kind of our solution with Banana Splash. We, um, we host everything on our end and then it doesn't slow the site down. But when you're running A-B tests, that is one of the reasons that you really do want to um, look a lot into 
the mobile metrics and understand what is loading slower so you can actually technically address them. I mean, there are many ways that Google offers and gives you ideas on how you can optimize the, um, the experience and how you can optimize loading time. So I would get a test running and then kind of examine it with Google tools to see where are the, the biggest pain points. You can also see that within Google Analytics and try to adjust them with your dev team. It definitely is a big issue and I do hope that um, it will be solved um, with all the tools that are out there today um, to kind of maybe um, reduce the time but I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's a serious issue and I am, yeah, I mean that, that's why for me it was really important to do that within Banana Splash to just have it not um, affecting SEO or uh, loading time. Uh, well, great. Uh, next question is from Edward, who who has three questions that he'd like to ask. Uh, the number one, question number one is, uh, do you subscribe to mobile first design? Oh, um, I'm going to take this that you're basically asking if you should first do mobile design and then adapt it to desktop. Um, you know, desktop visitors aren't mobile visitors, so I'm not really into automatic design for anything. Obviously when you don't have the resources to create separate, um, you know, a separate mobile site and a separate desktop site, um, what you can do is, you know, think about hierarchy of information. You have a lot of info about your desktop visitors. You already know what they're looking for. You can see that on Google Analytics. So, um, you know, I would think about hierarchy and I would design that. So if you do a responsive design, whether you do it mobile first or desktop first, Whichever um, you know, whichever device you're using it for, think about what those people need and where they are, and you can you you can still use responsive design to kind of change the hierarchy. Um, I mean, mobile first is great, and it's definitely a way to go. But you need to make sure that it's not going to damage conversions on desktop because that's another way you know for revenue, and especially for e-commerce sites and um, different publishers that need those desktop conversion rates. So it really is according to your specific emotion, um, your specific um, audience and who they are and what they're coming from. I mean, I do have a client who has over 90% of mobile traffic. So that's a definite yes on mobile first. Uh, well, there's an extension to this question, uh, which is, uh, do you think <laughs> mobile websites need a separate bespoke design rather than a rearranged version of the desktop? Uh, also, do you think that all content of the desktop should be on the mobile as default? Okay, um, so the second one I kind of answered, um, basically build it according to your target audience and where they are. Um, and the third one, uh, you know, SEO kind of says that you do need to have that, but you, as I was saying before, you can decide what content is going to be where. So a lot of the times when we do um, responsive design for some of our customers, what we did in the past, um, we would just rearrange the content. So we don't want to have everything above the fold and we want to have it in the, the right way. So we would still keep the content, but we would move it around and have it in, in various sections so they only appear once you scroll a lot or once they're on different pages and stuff like that. So you can still keep the content for SEO reasons but you're not overloading the mobile visitor with all this information. All right. Uh, well, uh, we're moving towards the end of the Q&A session. Just a couple of questions more. Uh, this is from Dawn. He wants to know how do you trigger that pop-up messages, uh, pop-up messages in general based on the visitor behavior. Now, is there a special script or a service that does that? Um, well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I feel like I'm promoting, but <laughs> that's what Banana Splash does. It's a, it's a JavaScript code um, that you put on your site, and basically what you do um, is you implement it one time on your site, on your header or via GTM, Google Tag Manager, and that's it. And then the Splash itself will know how to divide the traffic and what to segment, and you basically choose the action you want your customers to take, and then it will choose who to show it to. So it's a script that you implement one time. And it really kind of depends on the tool that you're using. But the splashes um, that we use are basically just triggered by that JavaScript code. Uh, great. Uh, well, the final question from is, uh, is from Ivan, who wants to know if he's understood correctly that we should follow or we should use the M dot approach. Mm, that's... <laughs> 
I can't really answer that because it really does depend on your site, on your customers, and again, it really depends on you know SEO reasons and where you are in that, and how much percentage of your traffic is mobile, how much of it is desktop. Um, depending on those kind of metrics is what you will decide. Um, I don't know if you have to have the M dot approach at all. Um, I don't usually recommend it, but I build it according to my customer, their website, and what they're actually doing right now, and not just like a, a general thing, um, which is kind of like my general rule with everything in marketing um, and responsive design. You know, I'm, I don't do anything automatic. I run in-depth research. I understand who the customer is and what the website is and where they are in all aspects, and then decide on the strategy. So sorry, I can't give you an exact <laughs> answer um, for that, but I'd say definitely check out you know what your status is right now, and then make a decision according to that. Uh, well, great. Uh, that's about it. Uh, we have a few more questions, but I think we're going to answer them separately uh, in in the follow up emails. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Talia, so much for uh, patiently answering all these questions and for the wonderful insights that you uh, provided uh, to the webinar audience. Uh, I want to th thank once again all the audience uh, who tuned in and uh, uh, listened in uh, to the webinar. I hope this is very useful for one and all, and uh, we'll keep you notified of our future events. Tanya, uh, Talia, any final words? Me. No, I just wanted to say thank you very much for having me. Um, and if you guys want to follow up with any questions, feel free to tweet me. Um, Talia GW and I'd be happy to talk to you. So have a great day guys. Great. See you guys.